So in the last video we did outbound calling. Um, that was a lot of work. This video should be less work. Uh, we are going to work on inbound calling. Um, so I made a little documentation of what the call flow is. So what we're going to have is a public uh, telephone network. So let's say someone from outside calls our phone number. So the phone number is called that goes out to the public network. From there, it's set to uh, VoIP.ms because they own that number. Um, it runs through them. And they're going to look at their records and they're going to send it to our cube router. And that's where it's handed off to us. And the first thing it's going to match is the dial peer. So we need to create a dial peer to match a number coming into the cube from VoIP.ms. And then we need to tell that where to go. Um, and here's the dial peer that I set up and applied to my cube router. And you can see the destination pattern is 616-320 dot 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 dollar sign. So why is it set up this way? It's set up this way um, as if I had a whole bunch of DIDs. So let's say I had 15 numbers and they all started with 616-320 dot 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 this would match all of those numbers each dot represents one digit you know any digit zero through nine and then this dollar sign indicates the end of it so it's not going to wait for any more digits um, and then it come coming down to this line it's saying okay you match this destination pattern now we're going to go to 10.0.0.10 which is our cisco call manager so our cube knows where to send these calls. Next thing we need to think about is the call manager. Does it know where to send these calls? And the answer is no. Um, first of all, that cube is going to need a call and search space. Just like a phone, um, it needs to um, know which numbers uh, go where. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create that first. I'm going to go to call routing, class of control, call and search space and I'm going to add new and I'll call it VoIP dot MS EIDs and I am just going to put in the internal numbers Okay, so I've created the call and search space with all of our internal numbers. Then I'm going to go into device, trunk. And then I need to come down to inbound calls in the call and search space. I'm going to choose VoIP, .ms, DIDs. The configuration change will not take effect on the trunk until a reset is performed. Use a reset button. So I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to reset. But we are still not quite there on telling the call manager where to send the call. So what we want to match is all numbers starting with 616-320. And what we want to do is we want to look for extensions matching these uh, wildcard digits right here, and we want to send it to that. So to explain a little bit further, um, this is one of the DIDs, 616-320-4837. So normally we would just have like a jabber or an internal phone with the internal directory of 4837. And we want that to ring when someone from the outside calls the full 10 digit number. So what we want to do is we want to create a translation pattern. To match that DID. So 320. And we want it to strip these off, look at what the last four digits is, and send it to that number. 
And I will illustrate that by creating that translation pattern. And we go into that by call routing. And translation pattern. And I'm going to add a new one. And I'll copy this right here. Put that in there. And I'm just going to put this on the internal partition. And I'll call this DID exhalation pattern. And we want it to come down here to called party transformations. And what we're going to do is we are just going to put in X, 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 X. And what that is going to do is that is going to tell it to only look at these last four digits. And then change the destination that the call is going to those last four digits. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And back to our documentation. So we've got this all set up. We have the dial pier, we have the SIP trunk calling search space, and we also have the, um, the translation pattern. But we still don't have this extension anywhere. So we need to add this extension to that Cisco Jabber. So I'm gonna go find that phone. And I'm gonna change this from 1000 to 4837. And click save. Go back to the device, just make sure it took. Okay, and now I should be able to make a call from the outside to that number. And there was something that I forgot to do, so I'm gonna do that now. Um, I did not give that translation pattern or calling search space, so I got a busy signal when I called. So let's go back to call routing, translation pattern, there's the calling search space, and here's where I changed it. It was none, so I got a busy signal when I called, and I changed it to VoIP.msdids, which only has those internal numbers in it. So I'm going to go ahead and click, actually, yeah, I'll just click save again. And <coughs> then I'm going to call that again for my cell phone. Hello. Hello. And as you can see, that worked. So there we have it. We now are routing calls out, routing calls in, we are good to go. Thank you so much for watching. If you uh, don't understand anything or I missed something or it's still not working, let me know. Oh, I do want to mention one more thing before I end this. I was losing my mind because these calls were not getting into call manager when I was testing this before I made the video. Um, I couldn't see them getting into the cube router. Um, nothing was happening when I was calling except I was getting a busy signal. So I would call for my cell phone and I would get a busy signal. And uh, I went into the DID settings on VoIP.ms and I realized that the inbound call routing settings were actually something different than I had set up before. When I made the router configuration, it, it I, uh, I added this for my trusted IP address from VoIP.ms in the IP trusted list. Uh, I'll show you that. Um, and it was actually set up when it was failing for one of these, which was not on that trusted list. So my cube was just rejecting those calls. And as you can see, here's the IP address trusted list. And I had call manager and uh, what is called the uh, DID point of presence from VoIP.ms. And so you can see that this is only those two are on the list 
And my point of presence before I changed it to New York 4 was one of the San Jose ones. Um, so I was getting a busy signal because the cube was rejecting it. Um, as soon as I changed that, the call came right in. Um, so if you're running into that problem, uh, take a look on that. Make sure you have it in your IP trusted list and that the correct point of presence is in there. And like I said in the last video, you're likely to run into problems like this where it's really hard to understand. Um, get out Google, uh, write a comment on the video. I'll uh, try to give you a hand. Um, and uh, a lot of times you just have to work your way through it. And it's super discouraging right up until you, the point where you figure it out. And then it uh, feels amazing. You feel really accomplished that you got it done and you got it working. And then you have a full working lab with internal, inbound, and outbound calling. Um, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please uh, like and subscribe and there will be more added to this series. Thanks.